Hello, everyone, and welcome back to part two on the energy use intensity series with Climate Studio. Today, we are going to primarily look at some of the upgrades you can do with Climate Studio that focus on the internal loads and the envelope. The first part is looking at the equipment and lighting loads here in yellow and gray. And for that, you go to the zone settings in the thermal analysis tab. You click on the edit button and the zone settings tab pops up. Here we are primarily going to stay in the first tab, the loads tab. And you can see that all of the schedules are set to the default according to the climate zone you defined and the type of program that you selected. And right at the very bottom, you can see the equipment and the lighting section. Both of these power densities are set to a default, the 10.76. And the lighting power density and the equipment power density numbers that I'm going to input here correspond to another video tutorial that goes through the step-by-step -step process in order to get to this specific lighting power density or equipment power density number. The illuminance target is currently set to 500 lux, which is common for purely electrically lit spaces. The dimming level of 300 lux is sufficient for daylit spaces because of the great color rendering properties of daylight. And the last one is the dimming type. You can choose between off, stepped and continuous. And there the light gets automatically dimmed to maintain the 300 lux using the combination of daylight and electric lighting. This occurs when the electric lighting is turned on, which is defined in the lighting schedule above. When you're finished with this, you can click OK, close the tab and run the simulation. And hopefully this will reduce the EUI overall. You can see that these small changes greatly improve the EUI performance, and we managed to reduce the overall EUI by about 15%. The next step is looking at the heating and cooling loads. You can see the bars in red and blue are still extremely high. So by adapting some of the current settings in the envelope, hopefully we can reduce these heating and cooling loads and therefore also the overall energy use intensity. For the second part, you want to go back into the zone settings to the third tab called envelope. And there you can see the current construction buildup of your project. The construction buildup is divided into multiple parts. For this exercise, I'm going to select the facade tab and show you a step-by-step -step process in how you can change the current buildup to a better performing one. And this process is repeated for all of the other construction sections that you see here in the envelope tab. First, you click on the facade tab and you can see the current template that is selected for this facade with a U value that can be reduced. So the lower the U value, the better performing this buildup will be. To do this, you duplicate the current buildup and it will redirect you to a new tab. And there you have the option to change the thickness, but also the kind of material itself. And I'm going to choose a better performing insulation that has a lower thermal conductivity than the current one. I'm also going to change the insulation thickness to 12 centimeters. This brings down the U value to 0 0.223 watt over square meters Kelvin, which is a great improvement to the original U value. By clicking OK, you can see your new facade buildup in the envelope tab.
And now you can repeat this process for all of the other construction sections in the envelope tab. And as soon as you are done, you can click OK and run the simulation again. So by updating the envelope, you can see that there's a new EUI and this is 20% less approximately compared to the baseline, which was set to 242 kilowatt hours per square meter. There's definitely room for improvement when changing to the energy flows chart. You can see that the mechanical ventilation requires a lot of energy. And so by changing some of the other internal loads, you can reduce the overall EUI even more. That was it for part two. I will see you back in part three, where we aim to compare some of the results with one of the Climate Studio features.